Hello, my friends. Thanks for joining me in the studio today as I paint this beautiful floral scene. I went to the nursery the other day with Carl and we were picking up some pots and flowers for the garden and there was so much inspiration. I took a ton of photos and this is one of them. If you'd like to see the full demo, please come on over and check out my Patreon page. I have a lot of videos there to share with you and uh, really get into a lot more detail about my working process. And I really appreciate my patrons on my Patreon channel because um, their support allows me to continue to give you free content here on YouTube. So I really hope to see you over there. Come on over and check it out. So I'm working on a piece of pastel mat. I love working on pastel mat when I'm doing florals. Um, I think I just like the dreamy effect, the kind of romantic effect that I feel that I get from pastel mat. You can see that I also gridded out this scene. Uh, sometimes I do that if I just want to be a little bit more accurate with the placement of my composition. I'm working with a lot of soft pastels here. I have a lot of <laughs> different brands and types of pastels, but you know I choose them based on uh, what I use on a lot of factors, one of them being the surface that I'm working on. And I do find that with a paper like pastel mat, or sometimes papers, uh, unsanded papers or printmaking papers, um, I prefer to use a softer pastel on those papers. I just feel that it holds, uh, that paper holds softer pastel better than a harder pastel. So I'm coming in and really blocking in the big shapes. I really wanted this piece to focus on the really vibrant color of those beautiful petunias. So in order to achieve that, I'm keeping, I'm attempting, and I think I succeed in keeping the rest of the piece fairly neutralized. You know, when we want to really have an area of interest pop, um, especially if it's a saturated color, one of the methods that we can use that are at our disposal is to put neutral colors around it. So even the yellow of the rose bush, uh, those, those yellow roses, I've actually used a fairly um, neutral yellow. You know, if you looked at the other yellows that I had available to me, uh, I, you know, I, I chose one of the, the more uh, neutralized ones because I don't want too much uh, focus up in that upper corner. Negatively painting some of those grasses in, always looking at the big shapes. So when I paint a scene like this, um, instead of looking at all of the little teeny bits of foliage and every single flower, I'm not a realist painter and uh, I would prefer to create an impression of what I see. So I really always am working towards looking at the big shapes and massing them in as opposed to painting every single flower. I think that uh, is just a way of seeing that takes a lot of practice uh, and you know I don't always get it right. <laughs> I'm constantly working at, at seeing with that artistic eye. I really liked the way that this composition led the viewer through the piece, especially those little vines coming off of the petunia leading the viewer um, over and then the saturated pinks of the petunias kind of leading you up. And I even liked how the edge of that pot, even though it's close to the edge of the of this uh, painting plane, I, I felt that it worked because it curves back in, in towards the flower, uh, in towards the yellow roses. So always, always thinking about how I'm leading the viewer through the piece. Starting to work a little more into detail on those flowers. I'll be coming back in and smudging some of them out uh, to lose some of those edges. Edges are so important and um, strategically placing hard edges is a big part of how we can keep the viewer in the focal area that we choose. Keeping that area down um, on the ground neutral. In the, my photo reference, it was much warmer. And in other circumstances, I might have 
created a very um, orange path that the pots were sitting on, but I chose to make it neutral, very almost just a grayscale because I want to keep the viewer's eye on those pink flowers. And again, neutralizing the uh, colors around a saturated area can really help that, that saturated color pop. Coming in with dots and dashes, which I love to do uh, for, for uh, foliage, and starting to come in with a little bit more of a highlighted, a uh, little bit more of a, of a bright yellow, just to add a little bit of interest up into those roses. Adding just a little bit of lavender in those grasses on the left as well, will kind of work as arrows to help lead the viewer through the piece. It's almost kind of a circular composition. Um, I look at them as little arrows leading us back down towards the petunias. And here I'm starting to smudge with my finger a little bit. Um, I don't take anything off of the table. Uh, you know, if I want to smudge a little bit to lose some edges and I feel that it will successfully work in a piece, then I'll do it. Uh, whatever it takes to make the piece work, I'm okay with. Thanks for coming along with me as I painted this beautiful little floral scene. It really reminded me that spring is here and there's so many opportunities coming up with all the beautiful flowers that I can't wait to paint. I'll see you soon.